Greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabin Tiu Van Diem. I'm a PhD scientist here at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and Emory University. Uh, I was trained in uh, France as a developmental biologist and bioengineer, and then I continued my studies uh, for about 10 years uh, at Stanford University in genetics and immunology and joined the faculty here at CF Atlanta about nine years ago. It's my pleasure today to talk to you about our work in cystic fibrosis and more specifically, how we're attempting to better understand and find new treatments for lung inflammation. So just a quickly a primer on cystic fibrosis. It's a multi-organ fatal genetic disease it's uh, linked to mutations in a channel that conducts uh, ions. It's called the CFTR. And uh, there's about 80,000 patients affected uh, by cystic fibrosis in the world. Life expectancy of CF patients who are born today is about 48 years. That's the estimate. And obviously we're all tr working to try to um, increase that life expectancy. There's a lot of mutations that are known of the CFTR uh, they all have uh, different ways that they um, impact the function of this protein. Uh, this protein is uh, involved in the function of a lot of different organs. But most of the uh, morbidity, that is the, uh, the, the reasons why patients with cystic fibrosis are sick, and most of the mortality among these patients um, are linked to um, the lung disease manifestation. So this is what we're going to be focusing on today. It was something that's very typical of uh, lung disease in cystic fibrosis patients is uh, the entry into the lumen of the lung of uh, cells that are recruited from blood. They are inflammatory cells, so they're normally there to protect our body against um, infection. And in cystic fibrosis, these uh, cells that we call the neutrophils are accumulating in the lumen of the lung in an early, massive, and sustained way. And what they do there is that uh, not only they occupy uh, uh, the airways, uh, but they also release some very toxic material, some proteases like elastase and molecules that also produce uh, oxidants like myeloperoxidase. So this leads to uh, damage to the tissue. Uh, this is not what immune cells are supposed to do. So um, the part that's really intriguing in CF is that um, this inflammation with neutrophils occurs regardless of the mutation of the CFTR. And also these immune cells are supposed to help us clear infections, but in the case of cystic fibrosis patients, uh, this is not happening. So not only have these patients um, those cells coming into their lungs, but they also are infected with, uh, with bacteria. This has been something that uh, my group has been working on for um, about 20 years now. And what we found is that those neutrophils here that are depicted in the pink uh, are really in the center of a, of a network with other cells. The epithelial cells that are lining the lung that express most of the CFTR um, and also other immune cells that um, normally cooperate to keep the airway sterile. And these cells are being inhibited. So their function is uh, altered by the presence of those neutrophils. Those neutrophils talk with the epithelium all the time. And because of this abnormal um, ecosystem, if you wish, some bacteria, st uh, staph, pseudomonas, um, have the ability to stay within the lung. And um, I would say the, the main contribution of my group over the years has been to show that those neutrophils that come into the lungs of CF patients are not uh, adopting uh, two of the main fates that are known of these cells where they either gob gobble up the, the, the bugs by phagocytosis and kill them inside or release um, some uh, meshes made of DNA and, um, and proteins that can kill uh, the, the bacteria extracellularly. But instead they go through what we call the, the grim fate for granule releasing immunomodulatory and metabolically active so this is a new fate that we discovered of these cells in patients with cystic fibrosis, where the, the toxic material is being released actively by the cells. And uh, those cells actually um, fail because of that to kill bacteria. Um, what we have done uh, in my lab more, most recently is uh, show that we can recapitulate this grim fate in vitro. So I've put on my uh, engineering cap and uh, we've been able to develop um, a makeshift uh, lung uh, in the filters and expose uh, the top to fluid coming from CF patients' lungs. 
And when we recruit blood cells, blood neutrophils through this filter, and they go to the other side and they, they meet this fluid from CF patients, they reproduce the same type of uh, abnormalities that we see when we collect the Grimm neutrophils from the airways of, uh, of patients when we collect that from the sputum, for example, that they expectorate. So we can see that with a, a laser-based method called flow cytometry, where we can analyze each one of those cells separately. And we find this uh, occurs uh, because these cells decide to make new material when they get into the airways. So they adapt by making new RNA and new proteins. Um, so when we block this uh, function, when we block the, uh, uh, the production of these new RNAs, we block the production of these toxic protease, elastase, which is chewing up the lung of the patients. But the big surprise is that we, when we block this, uh, this transcription of RNA and this production of proteins, we also acquire better killing of bacteria. So what's that, what that means is that these inflammatory cells are coming into the lungs of CF patients and they're actively repressing killing of bacteria which is completely novel. Um, and we've been now using this system to screen for new drug candidates. I'm sh showing you here a drug. I cannot reveal uh, yet its name, but we have the ability with this drug now in our system to not only decrease the release of toxic material by the cells, what we call exocytosis, we decrease it, but we can also regain or increase bacterial killing. Okay, so there is, there is hope. I think there is hope um, uh, on our end to, to find maybe new, new drugs or uh, other ways to, to straighten up these cells. Um, we've worked with colleagues at um, the University of Alabama in Birmingham from the Gagar Lab and uh, folks at Georgia Tech from the Roy Lab to see if we can um, use that new knowledge and package either small molecules here or uh, genes to change the the, 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 the profile of transcription in these cells, and if we can do that in vivo. Um, so the technology that we're using are those nano in micro particles. So these are micro gels that can be directed to the lung and they swell when they reach the lung. And we use the proteases that are released by those pathological neutrophils to undo those micro gels and release nano particles that are contained within them. And when those nano particles contain drugs or genes that are directed towards these neutrophils, then we can actually target those cells directly in vivo. Uh, so this is uh, really sort of, uh, um, I think, uh, generating a lot of hopes uh, um, on, our, on our end. And uh, really what we want to do is, is move the dial for patients in the next two decades. What I'm showing you here is what happened since the 1980s. 1989 was when the, the drug, um, the, the gene for um, CF was cloned, the CFTR. And since then, as you can see from 86 to 2016, the, um, the predicted survival age of the patients has risen from 28 to about, uh, you know, uh, 45 or so. So what's gonna happen in the next 20 years, 2020 to 2040, we want patients, and that's really our objective as a community of researchers and clinicians. We want patients with CF to reach the life expectancy of the normal population, okay? The general population. And how can we do that? So there's been really a, a success story in uh, the CF field. Uh, drugs have been developed um, in the last few years. They're called CFTR modulators. They directly affect the the genetic problem, you know, the, the mutation of that CFTR anion channel. And we've been able to show that uh, thanks to those therapies, those patients are patients with cystic fibrosis are doing much better. But we think that this therapy is not sufficient to affect the underlying uh, inflammatory defect and the problem with bacteria, at least not completely. So what we want now is not only have those, mod those modulators come into play, but we also want new treatments for inflammation, as I, as I discussed earlier, small molecules, gene therapy. Why do we need you? Well, we need you because we need to do more research. We need more research to um, finalize the, t the targets for, um, uh, for intervention. We need to hone in our drug agents, either those small molecules I talked to you about or gene therapy. And we need to make sure that we can deliver those, uh, those, those agents safely and effectively to patients. So I think the future is bright for CF research uh, and also for the activity here in our wonderful center, CF Atlanta. Um, so we really um, uh, you know, look for your help, 
uh, your support uh, in the next few years. Um, and please um, don't hesitate to contact us. I want to acknowledge a, a lot of people that we work with, um, uh, both in the US and internationally, our funding. Um, my email is here. This is our website. Please don't hesitate to contact me. I will be uh, delighted to continue this conversation with you.